Today, we'll be exploring how to build a particle collider in Python and visualizing it using Pygame. The visualization on the screen is created by using a program structure of three files, a main file, a class file with particle in it, and a functions file with just a very simple geometric function that looks like this. And we've explored this in a previous video, but effectively it just allows you to measure the distance between two points. And we call that in our main and our class particle files as well. So let's have a better look at the main file. And within the main program, and all these files, by the way, will be available on GitHub. In this file, we have some imports, obviously of Pygame and random because we're going to use that, but also that class particle file, which we're going to write in a little bit. And then there's some general setup here. We have the initializer for Pygame. We set up the window, the caption, and then we have a nice background and we call the particles using the particle class and we store them in a simple list. And here are just some colors that are selected so that we got that nice visualization we'd seen before. And if we have a look in the game loop, which just appears below that section that we had just looked at, we can see that we've enabled an exit here at the top, and then we blit the background to the screen. And then there are three sections of drawing the particles, performing a guidance alteration to the particles that just alters their direction, dependent on whether they've collided with another particle or if they've hit the wall. And we'll see how that happens within the class. And we have an update position for the particles. And then we just have the update and the clock tick addition. And right at the very bottom, we have the if name is equal to main, and then we run the main function. And this is just a useful thing to prevent us running code in our imports that isn't something we've explicitly stated should be run. Now within the class particle file, we have this very simple import of the functions, the geometric functions with that little Euclidean distance function inside. And then we declare the class and we have these two simple functions right at the beginning. We have the initializer and it just takes things like position, direction, speed, radius and color and we set this collision status flag to tell us whether it's at present colliding with an object or not. Then we have a guidance controller where we have a box that's the boundary box and we use that just simply here and this will be another function we have a little look at in a second where we update the direction of the particle dependent on the boundary box. So if it's starting to go out of the boundary box, we obviously update it to reverse direction. For each particle in particles, we loop through. If the particle position is the same as this object's position, we know they're the same object, and so we don't look at them. And then what we do is we do a collision check of the particle. So we just want to check if that particle is colliding with our self object. If we're already colliding, we ignore it and we break. But if self collision status is equal to false, we then set that to true and we change our direction of the particle. So this is just a really, really simple little loop that allows us to only consider a collision if we are not already colliding. And that's a nice little simplification to our model. But we need to obviously define this boundary update direction function, the collision check function, and the collision update direction function. And they're here. This boundary update is just a series of if statements, or if and elif statements, that take the boundary box, which is formatted as an x min, x max, y min, y max list, and we just check to see if the object is inside the box, if it's not, is its direction the right way for it to return into the box? And if it is the right way, then it shouldn't do anything. This is really important because sometimes at a high speed, your object can move quite far outside the box such that within one frame, it won't return into the box. And so what will happen is you'll just end up flipping your direction continuously back and forth because you're multiplying it by minus one each time. 
and so you need to have that little flag just to check whether it's going back into the box. The collision update, we just take the position and the particle position that we're colliding with and we use that to actually get the direction and then we go in the opposite direction. So we use the self position and the, minus the particle position and this gives us a vector that's going away from the particle we're colliding with. And we use that vector to change our direction of the self object to move away from the particle. So it's an elastic collision. The objects come together, they hit and they move apart in opposite directions. The collision check is just a really, really simple analysis using the Euclidean distance formula, where we look at the distance between the particle between a particle position and between the self, the object position, and if it's less than the radius of the particle plus the self radius, then we know it's got to be within, well, the two circles have to be within each other, so they're colliding. And that means you return true, because there is a collision occurring. Otherwise, we return false, because no collision is occurring. And then we have this update position function, which is super important because that's how we update between each frame. And effectively, we take the present position of the object, its direction and its speed, and that will give us the new X and Y position. And that's pretty much everything we've got for that simple initial display we saw on the right hand side, right at the introduction. But now we're going to play around with it a little bit and see what we can do to generate some nice little visualizations. So here we've just increased the number of particles and we're observing how the collision works, whether it looks reasonable, does it look dynamic and fluid, and it seems to, so that's, that's really good. And then we randomized the radius so that each different particle had a different radius. The collisions still seem to be working on the edge point of the particles, and that was really good too. But this got me thinking about whether we could have an interactive radius, where upon each collision, the particle would get smaller. And so what I did is I set up the particles, and this is just um, a slight edit to the main file, where I had 10 particles for I in range 0 to 10, and I gave them a radius of 25, and their color was just set to white. But within the class, I added a radius decrement function within the collision detection. So if self collision status was false, but you'd had this collision up here, the collision check was true, then you set the collision status to true, you updated the direction of the particle based on that collision, and you also did something called the radius decrement, so that's making the radius smaller. And that function was just this thing down here, super, super simple, which just stated if the radius was greater than five, then the radius should decrease by one. So on each collision, it will get slightly smaller. Let's see what that looks like. And here you can see that upon each collision, the particles are getting smaller. So it's working really, really nicely. It's quite fun to see that a certain particles don't seem to be colliding, colliding very much because they remain quite large. And it's quite interesting to see how, even with just this sort of randomized action, some seem to be able to avoid quite a lot of collisions. <laughs> Now, while that was all exciting, I thought, let's scrap that and try something else. So what I've done here is I decided, and we'd removed the code previously, so we're no longer having the radius change, but to draw a line between the particles. So we just have, and I think I reduced the number of particles down to five as well. But for the particle in the particles, in each, each, um, each one of the particles, you would draw a line between them, between the particle position and the point position. And it was going to have a width of three. And that creates a really nice little effect that we can see here.
Now seeing this like this gave me an idea of a certain dynamic like screensaver type image we could do. And so I think we'll explore how we can make this a little bit more elegant, but also how we can make the lines feel just a little bit more dynamic, even though it's quite, it's quite hypnotizing to watch than just moving around the screen. So what I did is I took the main function that we had and I increased the size so the width and height were increased to fill my whole screen because I thought it would be a really nice display. And then we've got this little change going on where dependent on the distance between the particles depends firstly if a line is drawn and secondly on the colour of that line. And what I'm going to do is I'll let this run and I'll go quiet now because this looks quite pretty and just set it to some music. And I hope you enjoy. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like and uh, maybe subscribe. <laughs>